Hi, welcome to Get a Clue Casual Gamer, and we're going to be looking at a baker's dozen of card only games. I know that I, I know that you probably, if you're a casual gamer, consider yourself a casual gamer or even just a starting gamer, um, that you probably have grown up spent years playing the same games and so what I have chosen here are 13 new games but I've categorized them so with a game that you would probably be um, familiar with so I have three categories the first category a is the complexity of Uno. Okay? If you played Uno 29 million times and you know it by heart and you're looking for something different but not harder, then these uh, five, yeah, five games, card games, might fit the bill. If you, in category B, it, I kind of think of it as the complexity of um, Phase 10 or R Rummy. If you've played the card games Rummy or Phase 10, uh, Category B, and there are five in that category, are of similar complexity, similar weight. And then uh, Group C is in the range complexity wise of something like Rook. It's a little bit more thinking, but it's still not over the top. Okay, so think of it, and there are three in that category under the um, category complexity level of Rook. So think of Uno, Phase 10 slash Rummy, because Phase 10 basically is Rummy, but with extra rules, uh, <laughs> and Rook. So that's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be looking at these 13 games. And amongst them, maybe there'll be 1, 2, 3, 13 that really catch your interest. Um, and I'm going to tell you just a little bit about them. I'm not going to tell, give you a whole history about them, but just a little bit of insight about these 13 games. So let's begin with category A, uh, where they are no more complex, no more... Uh, heavy playing game than Uno. Okay? So make good family games too. First of all, we're going to start with Illusion. Illusion. Cards and Illusion will be, some will be like this, some will be swirls, some will be all different uh, shapes and sizes, but will have these same colors. They will have yellow and red and blue and green. Okay? And basically, all you're doing is you lay out the first card. Well, actually, let me pull out one of the directional. You have a bunch of cards that have colored arrows. And so when you turn one over, it will tell you, okay, now we're going for blue. And in ascending order. So... I'm going to put this one down. Let's say this one turns out to be the first one that is drawn. And so the first person plays it down. That's pretty easy. The next person draws a card. And it's this one. Now, the question is, if you're going in ascending order, does this go before or after this one when it comes to how much blue is in it? And you basically have to make a decision and you place it and that's your turn. Anyone else that's playing can look at that and go, okay. And they go and they pick up the next card. How much blue? Is it less or more than this card or this card? And for me, that's obviously less, so I put it there. You can just move things over and slip it where it should go, in the line. You can separate things, you can do whatever you want. But, 
let's say this was the first and second, and then you picked up this one and they went, mm, I'll put it here in the end. I think it's got more blue than this one. And the next person goes, oh, I don't think so. I think there's actually more blue in that middle one than in the end. And so that's when you turn them over and you check the percentage of blue. And guess what? You were right. So the either the person, <clears throat> let's see, they must decide um, the, the, what's the winning concept? <laughs> Whoops, sorry. Lost my, lost my rules. See, I told you I, I'm just here to get you going. You either get the cards, if you were correct, query correctly, and receive the... Oh, that's right. That's what it is. The person who said, I don't think that's right, and they were correct, then they get the blue arrow. These get discarded, and they keep that as a point. And then you draw another arrow, and now you start all over, and you start looking for reds. That is the entire game. And whoever ends up with the most arrows is the winner. Told you, not very hard. And that is Illusion. It is actually considered no harder than, go than Old Maid. <laughs> it has the exact same weight uh, suggested as Old Maid. So there's Illusion. All ages can play this. You're just looking at colors. Is there more or less? Hmm. Okay, so that's one. The next one is called Ohanami. Oops, let me, by Pandasaurus. The first one was, oh, they're both Pandasaurus. Pandasaurus Games, down here. They changed their logo, Pandasaurus Games. Ohanami is a card drafting set collection game. Illusion was a pattern recognition game. Ohanami is a card drafting set collection. It has beautiful, beautiful cards. Ohanami. And you are trying to um, create uh, rows of consecutive numbers. You can skip numbers, but you've got to be careful because you're only allowed three rows, three columns, and they need to be sequential in number. Whether you can add at the top, you can add at the bottom, but you can't add in the middle. So as the game progresses, you've got to make decisions as to where you're going to play. And set um, card drafting, let me explain card drafting. The terminology is you start off with, in this case, 10 cards. And you pick two and you pass the other eight to the next player. And you get eight from the previous player but those two that you picked you have to lay them down first then you take those eight and then you take pick two out of those pass the rest everyone ready you put those down and then you take the six that you just got you pick two pass them that's card drafting you're drafting cards out of a bunch and get and setting the rest aside just kind of like the draft board picking some people to be soldiers and some not back when we had the draft that's card drafting you're using some of the cards and then passing the rest over to someone else and hopefully getting some of them back to you that is the basic idea of the game you're just putting card numbers really pretty card numbers um, and there are four colors and they score a little bit differently. And that's Ohanami. A really beautiful, very simple game. The next one is also a 
card drafting set collection game, and that is Sushi Go. Sushi Go, you also, you will have a certain amount of cards. You will pick one or two. I can't remember. It's been a week since I played it already. You play it, you choose one, and you pass the rest to the next person, and then you play yours. You're either one or two. Pink one. But anyway, but they're all different cute little sushi. The, the cards all have all these little cute little sushi um, designs on them. They're absolutely adorable. And it's by the uh, game company, Game Right. Uh, sushi Go. Game Right. And they have a bunch of cute little games as well. So Sushi Go is, again, uh, simply you're trying to get points by... Uh, whatever the card type tells you, like the pudding at the end of the game, whoever has the most of the puddings out in front of them gets six points. The person who has the least pudding out in front of them gets a minus six. Big scoring difference. So yes, and others are a point, two points, uh, double points if you have uh, the... Um, Wasabi underneath a nigiri, yeah, it's like a nigiri on top. Whatever the nigiri is worth is doubled. And yeah, it's really a cute, quick, cool game. You know, talk about nigiri and got some sashimi, which is, if you have three, it's worth 10 points. This salmon nigiri is worth two points. The maki roll is, if you have the most, you have six points. And if you're second, you have three points, or else you have three points. I mean, it's just adorable. Adorable game, easy game, Sushi Go. Next in the A category, level of Uno, is 5211. They're kind of big cards. 5211 has uh, four different colors. Four different suits. They're, the suits are different colors and the pattern. Um, if somebody's colorblind, they go by the pattern because the pattern will be the same on all the, this is orange, all the oranges will have this pattern. They'll have a different number, but they'll have the same pattern. And five, two, one, one, you start off with five cards in your hand. You take out two and everyone plays them simultaneously. And there's a way of who gets it and uh, you, who gets what point, who gets to count what points, <clears throat> and then you drop, draw back up to five, and then you put down one, and you add one, and then you add, you know, draw up to five, add one more, and then you do it, not the first time. After everyone's put down four in front of them, then you add up things and see who gets to score what in that round and then you do more rounds until the cards are gone and that's your last round and you have total points and uh, you know like I said this is yellow and orange and all these fun colors so uh, there's little lizards on some of them you know it's it is really basically the game is five in your hand put down two Bring back, get two more, put down one, get one, put down one, get one, put that aside, and then count out who gets what, and then you start over again, and then those are separated, and then you go, put two down, get two, put one down, get one, put one down, get one, figure out the score, and you keep on doing that until the cards are gone. That's it. That is five, two, one, one. Very simple game. And the last in this easy category, in this super, super easy category, is The Game, which is the weirdest game name. If you're really looking for information about The Game, because, you know, Googling The Game is going to give you a whole lot of stuff. This little subtitle is, Are You Ready to Play? So if you are looking for The Game, Are You Ready to Play? That's the full name of it, so that, you know, you can find it. Uh, online uh, or in a store or whatever. That's the full name. The game, are you ready to play? And again, this is a cards. 
All of these are just cards. I had to pull out six games that I thought of as just card games, but they all have little tokens of some sort or little pawn piece or something. And I'm gonna do a separate video for all of that, all of those. So yeah, I'm looking at a stack right there that I had pulled out at the last minute going, oh my gosh, I had to open every single box and make sure that it was just cards. Cards, instructions, and maybe a score sheet. That's all I was allowing in this list. Well, the game is you, a cooperative game, first of all, um, and you, a hand management. You're trying as a group to get rid of all your cards, all the cards, in numerical order, ascending or descending, depending on the first, that you have four, four rows, one, two start with one and two start with a hundred. The ones with one go up, the ones with the, uh, up, the ones with a hundred go down. And you're trying to uh, play them so that you're getting rid of them all. And that is that game. That is the main purpose of the game is to get rid of those cards. And I'm just gonna sl slide this in here and get that in there. So yes, we have all these cards. You have one of the, I believe you only have one of each color, uh, of each number and four rows to get rid of them. Yep. It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> I tried to play it solo. I think it would work better with two or more people. Um, you're supposed to be able to play it solo. I have to play it a few more times if I'm hoping to win. Uh, but I think with more people, you'd have more chance, uh, more chances of getting the numbers that you need for this. And like I say, it's cooperative. So you can you you work together to get all these cards out. You're trying to beat the game. Um, in fact, the title, The Game, Are You Ready to Play, reminds me of that um, the 80s movie um, about the... Uh, oh, I was thinking about that yesterday, and I, I had the name right instantly, and of course I can't think of it right now. But it was the game where the computer at, you know, asked the young boy um, if he was ready to play, and you know, it was the whole nuclear... Holocaust game where the computer was actually doing it for real in real life where you know and so they were trying to figure out how to stop the computer well th this is like the cards the game saying are you ready to play are you tr ready to try and beat me and that's what we're trying to do is to beat the game and those are the five that I can that I have put in from their ranking in the A category, the category that is in the same level as playing the game Uno. Now I will give you a caveat. These games that you've played for many, many years, Uno, Face 10, Remy, Rook, you know them by heart. When you choose a new game, it might seem a little bit more difficult than it really is because you're just learning it. So don't give up on these. If they sound a little bit more complicated than what you think they should be like, the truth is they're not. It's just that they're new to you, to me. But those are the first five. Now let's go to category B, which is the level of Rummy Face 10. And the first one in that category I'm, I'm including, in case you can come up, up with one, it's hecho. Uh, yes, that is Spanish for made or done. Hecho. It's not hecho, which someone online uh, on YouTube, how to play video, called it hecho the entire time. It's the H is silent. It's hecho. Um, and actually, a lot of the wording is in Spanish, but the the instructions are in, are in English and in Spanish. So yeah, you don't need to know Spanish to play this game. Hecho um, is, but if you know somebody who speaks Spanish, this one does come with Spanish directions and is quite Spanish friendly. Um, basically, 
you're building, you're trying to build buildings and you're trying to get the cards that you need to build the buildings. And so for like, for instance, this building requires four green and three black. Well, this would cover the green and now you just need at least, you know, four black or three black or whatever I said. Um, and with those two cards, you can build, you can take that building card, which is worth points, and you have built that card. But how do you get these cards? Well, you start off with five, but what if you don't have what you need? Well, you can do different things, including something that is very reminiscent of Pit. Yes, I said it, Pit. It is a real-time game. So if you don't like real-time games, this is not a game for you because Echo is a real-time game where the cards are all in, in a pile in the middle of the table and you can always turn in two of yours for one in the middle or you can swap out and say, I have an eight, I have an eight, I have an eight. You know, somebody, I think it only goes up to six, so I don't know. Anyway, it's like, you know, or no, I think it does go higher. Anyway, um, <laughs> like, yeah, I know, yeah, there's an eight. Yeah, ocho, siete, uno, yeah. So, um, so you, you say, I have an eight, I have an eight. And somebody says, well, I have a six. And they're like, you don't know what color they're offering, though. And that might be the color that you need, and the one you're offering is not one you need, and so you're like, okay, yeah, swap it. But it's happening all the same time. Um, it is supposed to be okay for two and up group, but uh, the suggestion is that it be at least um, four to six players, four or five players because apparently at two or three, it's, it's too stagnant. And so the more people you have playing, the more chances of trading and keep going and, and doing stuff. And you do it until somebody builds a certain number of buildings. And that's it. You're building buildings. Um, in the words in Spanish on the box say you change things, you ch change. You build, you win. And that's it. Echo. The next one is actually Echo is by the. Oh my goodness, I have a lot of Pandasaurus here. I forgot to tell you that 5211 is by a company called Next Move, and the game is by Pandasaurus again. So the three of those are for, by Pandasaurus. This one is. Um, by two companies, Glowfly and Sandstorm. Glowfly Games and Sandstorm Productions. It is not easy to find. It came out about six years ago. It is not easy to find in the U.S. It might be easier to find in other places. There are people selling it on eBay. They are, are selling uh, some on um, Board Game Geek. Uh, but it's not easy to find. The next one is by the same makers, Glowfly Games and, um, what should we call it? <laughs> Sandstorm Productions. Yeah, there we go. Sandstorm Productions. It's called Impossible Machine. You can get this one. I went online and easily found it. Impossible Machine. You're going to have... Um, Cards that have all sorts of weird machine pieces. Some can connect with others, like this one has a little um, lightning bolt, so a lightning bolt can connect with that. And air, yeah, so it has to be able to connect by the symbols on it. And um, and you're creating this impossible machine. Uh, that, that's the goal is to use your cards and create this impossible machine. Uh, you build your own amazing invention. Take turns adding components to an overly elaborate contraption. Connect bumps to twists to drop in to drops 
in an attempt to play goal cards. Get points for each card you add and extra points for reaching your goal. That's it. That's impossible machines. You're just taking these and adding them to it and trying to get points and you will have a goal um, that will be on a card that you have upside down. And, uh, and that's what you're trying to achieve. That's it. That is this game. Um, let me open this up and uh, stick this back in. I took all these cards out so I could take pictures, but it's different things. Like this is an eraser, so you're erasing something. You can put it on top of something and erase it and put something else in its place. Yeah, it's just a, a not complicated game. You know, if you watch any of my videos on specific games, these are the rules. And when rules are that short and sweet, you're done. It's easy. It's not complicated. Upside down. There we go. Impossible machines. The next one is a category. Flux. There are flux card games abounding. So many different themes of flux games. I have a holiday flux because I am about to hopefully by next weekend have a video on Christmas themed games and so this is one that I have so but the flux games basically play the same it doesn't matter which one you have but you pick the theme you want if you like the Marvel superheroes then get the Marvel one if you like Batman get the Batman one if you like uh, Star Wars, get the Star Wars one, or Star Trek, Star Trek one. Um, you know, it, it, Mickey, Mickey and Friends, get there. It's like, it, there's so many different themes of flux. Uh, you don't need them all. Any one of them will do. It's like, there are so many. I mean, just in this, there, these are a few that they suggest. This is the original game right here, the original, original. But I mean, there's Cthulhu and Zombie and Pirate and Oz and Monty Python and Adventure Time and the regular show. I mean, it's just like, there's so many different flux games. But uh, it, the concept is very simple. The basic rule that you begin with is Draw one, play one. That's how you begin. But then there are different rules that can come into the game and take precedence over that one. And your game is always in flux. Okay? Again, these games here are at the level of Phase 10 and Rummy. So they're a little bit more than Uno, but not hard at all. And, um, and it's just simple little game that you're collect, set collecting, you're collecting a sets so that you can um, buy or complete a goal and you complete two or three to win the game. I can't remember, it's either two or three. But it's basically hand management, managing what's in your hand and what comes out, and set collection. You're just collecting sets. And that comes from Looney Labs, is the company that makes it, Looney Labs. But you can just F-L-U-X, I mean, so, yeah, <laughs> X-X, Flux like the flux capacitor, yeah, flux. Hmm. Okay, next in this category, number three, is Take Five, or the original name was Six Nymphed. Okay, Six Nymphed was the original name, uh, which is German, I believe. Um, but Take Five is what, we, what it's called in English. And again, you got a bunch of cards with numbers on them. <laughs> And you're just trying to um, collect them in numerical orders. You, it's a set collection, hand management. There's a lot of hand management set collection in card games. I'll tell you that right now. 
so many of them were set collection, which is, if you've ever played Rummy or Phase 10, you know what a set is. You know, it's like three of a kind or a run is four of a kind. Well, it's a, it's a set. You're, you're collecting sets. And that's what Take 5 is all about. You have all these different cards and you're trying to create sets in, with um, numeric, you know, numbers going up or down. And that is take five or six nymphed and I'm going to take these out I'm, I'm putting these all back as I tell you it's like these are the cards for it it's like a good longhorn you know, good Texan it's a game for you <laughs> but yes take five very easy game very easy and the last in this category is Parade. Parade, I've done a video on, an individual video, I believe I did. Um, and it's, the theme is Alice in Wonderland. And you are all uh, working on the same row of numbers and you're trying to end up with the lowest score possible. There's all these different... There's different, uh, I believe, six different suits, and they're different colors with a different character. Each one, uh, blue is Alice, and green, green is the um, the poor egg that fell off the wall. Um, yeah, yellow is that weird bird. I believe that's might be the Mad Hatter in red. And uh, let's see, oh, we got the late bunny in black and purple is the Cheshire cat. And you're trying to create um, a parade of characters that will cost you as little points as possible. And you're just putting them in placement in this row at the end of the row with numbers or colors that will get you the least points possible out of all the ones that are in front of it and that is Parade. It is by um, Fantasy Flight and Z-Man Games, well-known gaming company. Z-Man Games and uh, yeah which is out of Minnesota. Parade. Love it. Again, those were the five. Echo, Impossible Machines, Holiday, well, Flux, Take Five, and Parade in the B category, which is the level of Rummy or Phase 10. And now we have three in the C category. And C is kind of in the level of Rook. So it, it's not necessarily a trick-taking game, but it's in that level of complexity of Rook. And the first one is Stampede. Personally, I don't think it's that hard. I don't think any of these is that hard, but yeah, <laughs> I, I have to go by what other people think as well. Uh, Stampede is, again, a uh, hand management set collection. I told you there's a lot of these hand management set collection in, in card games, because that works really well with cards. And, um, each one will have a different ability. Each animal or um, card, <laughs> like for instance, the yeah the baboon. You can do this, and there, um, which is you switch one from your hand to one of the ones in the um, in the middle. Uh, this one you switch one of your from your hand to one in your in your um, album. You're making albums of animal pictures. Uh, a hippo, you change one of yours for somebody else's album. Um, a crocodile, you change your hand for somebody else's hand. And so you're laying down these animals and then doing what it says. But in the meantime, you're trying to collect like three of each, of three of something 
so that, you know, you three, four, five, I can't remember how many you're supposed to be getting uh, to win the game. Uh, but that's, that's, you know, just playing the right combination of animals to do and get the card that you really want so you use this one and then reuse that one and um it, it really let's see this is kind of you have yours in front of you you have yours in your hand and then there's ones the draw pile and there's you can draw from the draw pile or you can switch out something with one of yours it's it really is not a hard game but it does take a little bit more thinking. That's why I agree it can go into the rook level of play. So if you want a little bit more thinking, a little bit more uh, planning ahead strategy, Stampede's a good one. Fallen Angels is a very unusual game. It comes from Australia and every card this is not a, a, a real family-friendly game, as in uh, I wouldn't play it with children. Teenagers and young adults would probably find it a little fascinating. Um, every card has a picture of an actual um, mugshot. They're long, they're close up, and they're far away. But the mugshot and... and, and it actually tells us what they were arrested for. From Australia, a certain number, a uh, couple decades in the early 1900s, whoever took the pictures um, kept, it kept uh, an album of these pictures that, that he, the professional photographer, took for um, the police department. And, um, and so these are all actual mugshots. But... It's the symbols in the corners that are important. Because when you're holding, let's say I'm holding this card, I can see a symbol in this corner, but I cannot see these two. And I've got to figure out what symbols are here. And then if I manage to do that, then I can... Oh, actually, I would start off with, okay. I would probably start off this way with three. Um, this is three. I have two symbols. I don't know which of the two is up here. And so I need to, uh, the, everybody else is helping me. It's a cooperative game. We're trying to get these people arrested. <laughs> Yes, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these people arrested. And the way we do that is by figuring out, okay, you know, I need, I, I, I know there's two symbols on my side, right there, okay? But I have to figure out which one is on this side. So I'm here like, okay, this is the one I'm looking for. And everyone, if they have that symbol, have to show it to me but they might be looking at something like this and it could be this red one that's actually over here so i, I it's like it's really it's it's crazy it sounds much more complicated than it really is once you get going but yes it's not the easiest game but it is cooperative so you have a lot of fun working together trying to figure out what is the symbol that I have so that we can arrest these people? Because if we guess incorrectly, yes, if we guess incorrectly, they get away. They, get, they don't get booked. We're trying to get them booked. <laughs> That's the game, Fallen Angels. Um, like I say, it's basically, it's from Gameland and Gigamech and Side Room Games. Yeah, it's one of those... But it is available online. I, I, yeah, it is there. So it's if you want a very unusual game, but it's a, it's really a deductive game more than anything. It's a cooperative and deductive game, and hand management. That's what this is: cooperative hand management, deductive game. Fallen Angels.
And the last official one, because I do have a honorable mentions, last official one is Arboretum. Isn't that gorgeous? And that actually is one of the cards. Um, it comes with all, or with, I believe it's 10 different kinds of cards. Uh, you got the Weeping Willow and the Poplar and you, um, the Dogwood, the Royal Poinciana. And um, again, Arboretum is, uh, you're actually creating a... Uh, an arboretum <laughs> you're, you're creating this this tree garden and but there's certain ways of doing it to create a better point system Oops, upside down arboretum is a pattern building depending on what you, you're you know some cards will be above others or next to each other depending on where they where you place them so it's considered a tile placement, even though it's all cards. It's a card placement, pattern building, hand management, set collection, game. I'm telling you, these are all the different pretty trees that are in there. Um, it, none of these games is a long game. They all play within 30 minutes. It, really, it's none of them is a horrendous thing. I mean, they don't take as long as Phase 10 or... Um, rook yeah they take a half hour or less some of them even less but uh, you know like I say this one it it depends on what tree you put where to what kind of scoring you're going to end up with so placement is important and you're creating sets or arrangements to get a certain the best points possible in your Arboretum in your little orchard, except it's not an orchard with um, fruit. It's an ar yeah, an arbor, arboretum, trees, um, and those are the game, the card only games that I put in. But I have th a, a triple honorable mention. These are games that have been around since let's see, 1988, 96, and 98. They're all by the same company. Um, we have the first one that came out was Set, and then Quiddler, and then Five Crowns. Five Crowns is very rummy style, Five Crowns, but it's five suits. Quiddler is, you're creating words with the letters, cards, and Set, you're looking for sets, literally. Um, Either they have to have everything alike or nothing alike, and they have to fit both those criteria. Um, so it can be like this is everything alike in that they're all completely full, but everything different because it's one, two, and three, and purple, green, and red. So that fits the criteria. So that's set. Um, these are games that you could find in Barnes & Noble for, for years, for decades now. But um, now that Barnes & Noble has extended their games, um, you don't have to just get these kind of games. There are so many other card games. These are all good. I mean, I've had them for years, and I've played them many times to be something different. And they tend to be in the B category in that, rummy phase 10 um, level set is considered the hardest out of all of them um, but again that all of these are very easy to find except for echo um, the most expensive one what that i found was 20 dollars. most of them are under 15 dollars. some of them are under 10 dollars but most of them, all, I think almost all of them are under $15. So uh, I really suggest, and I'll put a list in the description of this video, um, these are great choices. And uh, if I had to choose for uniqueness and um, fun, I think I'm currently going with 
Sushi Go, Parade, and Arboretum. That's one in each category. There we go. Sushi Go, Parade, and Arboretum. Uh, I will I will say those are my the the top three for me right at this moment. It could change next week, <laughs> but right at this moment, Sushi Go, Parade, and Arboretum are my top three choices out of what I have here. Though Okonami and Five Two One One are right up there with it. And oh my gosh, and Flux. I um, I'm looking forward to playing Flux this Thursday at, with some friends, and um, that might push it back, push it up on my list again. But anyway, there you have it. A baker's dozen of card games, of only card card games, and three honorable mentions. And um, happy gaming. And maybe there's some ideas here for those. Uh, for that Thanksgiving family get together or Christmas get together family get together, none of these are too hard. Depending on the age of the people you're going to be playing with and the complexity that they are comfortable with, uh, whether it's Uno, Face Ten slash Rummy or Rook, yeah, I got a whole bunch of choices. God bless. Next time, and uh, happy gaming.